Ladies and gentlemen, this is Vivek Sundar. This is world's biggest unregulated bank, Starbucks. Based on the fact file, this is a secondary video, secondary channel video. What do you mean by that? Under, I didn't know Starbucks was that big. I remember Starbucks basically going all political and saying like, let's have a racial conversation, and everybody is like, what the fuck? I don't know where that went. When they stopped, I'm sure like enough complaint. <laughs> by his own employees went like i'm not doing this what is wrong with you i'm the one who's going to get punched in the face if i say something wrong so i don't know i don't know where that went but yeah starbucks is insanely blown up right especially like big cities in us like there's all, always one in each block or something we have starbucks here as well yeah uh, you know india is not a big coffee country tea country yes it's like i drink tea twice a day easily it's it's a thing i do sometimes i don't even think about it why am i drinking tea because i'm i drink tea that's why so coffee is like i never like coffee the, the ones were here like oh this tastes like shit surely there must be better one like americans drink it and the starbucks came here right and i drank a starbucks coffee thinking oh this is going to be awesome this is going to be tasting awesome and it was same level of shit i'm like what the hell so coffee just tastes shit is that it it's just an acquired taste people drink it because you get used to it it's just yeah that's the one thing you do people sometimes compares with like what do you call chai tea even though chai means tea that's a that's a indian name chai means tea yeah that's the one we drink here right so people sometimes compares that with the coffee i'm like you can compare the taste chai tea is awesome the taste is awesome right and it's not about like everybody has different taste no people can differentiate between bad taste and good taste right you can taste something bad but it just it's a thing you do so it's part of your life and fine now you like it coffee is the same thing i still drink coffee because it's coffee i want to drink coffee i drink coffee but coffee tastes shit why is that i'm surely there must be some people out there some great i don't know baristas or whatever who makes co- who makes coffee that tastes great there must be like oh this this is what coffee was for this is what the taste it should be and a coffee is one of those things that you have to get it right 100% otherwise it tastes bad type of way because starbucks coffee is same just like oh it doesn't taste that good so let's watch this one it's going to be interesting I'm just going to be honest with you. When I started this video, I kind of just wanted to know how they made so much money selling overpriced coffee. I was not expecting them to secretly be an unregulated bank that was powerful enough to manipulate the real estate industry. But here we are. Today we're talking about So you really mean that? I thought he just means like there's so much money flows through that they're like a bank, but no real estate and all that so they actually invest in that shit okay starbucks the coffee shop that also manages 1.7 billion dollars worth of other people's money doesn't have to pay interest to them and faces no banking regulation while they do it delete me you look nice um i thought we were gonna do mr and mrs smith why aren't you dressed up i forgot the no deleted scenes for you wait what does that mean Wait, what does that mean? This video is brought to you by Delete Me, super straightforward business. You give them money, they make sure the data brokers aren't selling your personal information on the internet. So if you don't know, pretty much any time that you use social media or any other free thing on the internet, that company is probably making money by harvesting your personal information, selling that to data brokers, and then data brokers sell it to whoever. Next thing you know, you're getting weird emails and robocalls, but luckily these data brokers have to delete your information if you fill out the appropriate request, and Delete Me will do that automatically for you, and then they will keep scanning all the data brokers and filling out requests as needed to make sure that your private information is not being sold on the internet. So if you want to go check them out, I'm going to have them linked in the description down below and then they're also always linked over on my website thefatelectrician.com. Let's get back to this video. All right, from the top, 1971, three friends open up a coffee store, not a coffee shop, a coffee store. They're not brewing coffee in-house and letting people leave with drinks. They don't have an atmosphere where people can come in and feel welcomed and drink coffee. No, they have a store that sells coffee beans, coffee, and then coffee making equipment like espresso machines, coffee bean grinders, and coffee pots. And while that sounds like a recipe for failure today, it was actually a huge hit at the time because at this point in time in America, the 1970s, there was no good coffee. There was just like the shit you can get in a can at a grocery store go home and make yourself it wasn't good coffee americans didn't have a coffee culture per se it was literally just people drinking coffee to get caffeine not because they liked coffee so when the starbucks guys came out isn't that everybody thought because that's kind of me right when i started working out caffeine became a real thing caffeine i'm pretty sure caffeine was the first thing i actually consumed we're like what the fuck this actually has an effect 
right? Because not many things you can eat and it, it might have an instant effect. People tell me kids, if they eat sugar, they would have effect like that. They would be like too overactive and makes sense physically. They're small, their whole nervous system, everything's small, so it kind of makes sense. But as an adult, coffee, caffeine is the closest thing you'll have. If, you, if, you don't, if you're not like saturated with caffeine, which is like you probably need to take a break or a month or so, right? And you take the first shot there, right? Like after a break or if you, if you haven't have it, right? Like big, first of all, 100 mg or something, like anything more than that should be a problem, right? Because if you, have, if you never had caffeine, you just take a big ass shot like that, yeah, yeah, that could be a bit too much, right? You, you would go through phases. You'd panic and shit. So anything under 100 mg, right? Basically what like your general coffee is, right? Big coffee cup, 100 mg around it, right? So if you take that, that would be really instant energy. Like in like 15, 20 minutes, you'll like, you'll have surge of energy, which you don't get anywhere else, right? So yeah, caffeine is one of those things, especially if you work out. So I, I always assume people just drink coffee, like especially like black coffee, which is just basically coffee and water, nothing else, no sugar, no nothing. I'm pretty sure people drink that just so they can get energy. It's not for the taste. I mean, come on. Um, they started selling actual fresh roasted whole bean coffee and then you could buy all the equipment to make it yourself at home. It was pretty popular. Then one day, because Starbucks was selling so many coffee pots and espresso machines and coffee bean grinders, the local salesman in charge started to take notice of like, hey, this one little tiny coffee store is selling more coffee making equipment than all the major department stores in the area combined. I need to go figure out what's going on here. And that guy's name was Howard Schultz, the future owner, CEO, and kind of the mastermind behind the entire thing because he shows up, sees what the Starbucks guy are doing he falls in love with it he thinks it's a brilliant idea and he basically has to beg them to be involved so they kind of reluctantly let him on board he becomes the business manager of sorts and over the course of the next decade they end up opening three more of these coffee stores inside the city of seattle then in the mid 1980s howard schultz ends up going to italy on vacation and he goes into an actual italian coffee shop which is something like he's never experienced before because they don't have coffee shops like that in america at this point in time he walks in the door you can smell freshly ground coffee there's baristas doing doing all their fancy kung fu moves, making lattes and shit. There's an entire culture. There's people, you know, reading newspapers, talking, and it hits it's Italian music playing in the background. Some guy with a guitar. Just... This is literally just a bar, but you get to go to this one before work instead of going after work, right? Because all a bar is is selling atmosphere. You can buy all the Cafe, alcohol way saying. cheaper at the grocery store, but then you have to drink it at home by yourself. So you're willing to pay five times as much to go have that same beer at a bar to enjoy the atmosphere and other people's company. And that's exactly what this coffee shop is doing, but they're doing it with coffee. And Howard realizes he's already the wholesaler for really good coffee. So if he opens up his own coffee shop, it would be like Anheuser-Busch opening up their own bar. He's no longer getting the product at wholesale price. He's getting the product at manufacturing price. He's going to make a killing. So he goes back home, tries to sell this idea to the other Starbucks guy. It's basically what if a steel maker suddenly realized I can make manufacturing equipment that requires steel. I mean, he's going to make a killing because this, uh, he basically, you're cutting out the middleman, right? Basically Amazon, right? Okay, Amazon. What is Amazon? Amazon is literally just a shop. Okay, it's an online shop now. Okay, by the way, it's the biggest shop on the planet. Who is that besides Amazon? Nobody, right? But there's, there's a bit like an asterisk on top because Amazon doesn't make their own shit. So Amazon just resells things. Because if they are this big, if they sell in every single country on the planet this fast, and uh, you know if they also make their own thing, they'll be overpowered. Oh, by the way, they now also make their own thing. So they are the one who manufactures things and they are the one who's selling it now in, on the entire planet. And people confuse like, why is Jeff Bezos the like top three richest guy of all time? This is why he's gonna stay there because you're cutting out the middleman. You have all the profit now, literally. They're not having it. This isn't broke. We're not going to fix it. Just keep doing what we're doing. So Howard Schultz is like, fine, I'm going to step away from Starbucks. I'm going to go open up my own coffee shop and do my own thing. This happened in 1985. By 1987, the original three Starbucks owners are having some financial troubles with the company. They just want to sell it and move on to a different business venture together. So they offer it up first to their friend Howard, who's been busy running his own coffee shop for the past couple of years. They want $3.8 million for the company of Starbucks, and they're going to give him 60 days to get it where he doesn't have to come 
compete with a bunch of other buyers. So Howard Schultz now has a 60 day grace period to come up with $3.8 million in the 1980s. So that's way more money than it is today. And he sounds like a crazy person, right? He's going into banks being like, hey, I've got this business idea. I'm gonna open up a coffee shop. Think of it as like a bar, but instead of selling beer at night, I'm gonna sell coffee in the morning and people are gonna come and pay $4 for a cup of coffee. Here's the kicker. We're not gonna sell coffee in sizes like small, medium and large, like literally everything else on the planet. We're just gonna come up with some made up Dr. Seuss words like tall, grande, venti. Yeah, what's with that? Wait a minute, what is it like this grande, this tall? There's also like a small version. What was that name, man? Really? Uh, uh, yeah, there's also venti, right? There's no, I don't think I've seen Trent. There's short, tall, grande, venti. There's even smaller version of, wait a minute, I have to check this out. It's called Pico, P-I-C-C-O, Pico. And then there is like short, tall, grande, and venti. In, oh, this, that's only with some options like cappuccino or something like that. What the hell's a Pico? Sh smaller than short, apparently, okay. Trenta, whatever other random fucking bullshit words I want to make up. And it's going to be a huge hit. You should definitely give me millions and millions of dollars. No, you're dead, Carl. You say no to life and therefore you're not living. You don't have a girlfriend. You don't have anything close to a girlfriend. Am I right, Carl? So to everybody's surprise, the bank isn't really interested in that idea. So he starts going to venture capitalists. And finally, he gets referred to a venture capitalist by the name of Bill Gates Sr., a.k.a. Bill Gates' dad, that agrees to give him the money so that he can buy Starbucks. Now, is that super relevant to the story? No, not really. But I know... But... So even Bill Gates' dad was something like that. Bill Gates isn't the first one. I don't know, I was assuming like Bill Gates is someone like who just did this and somehow worked. His father was working in some electronic shop or some shit, I don't know. But even he was something, right? I, I guess it makes sense, right? Like you, you get a lot of cues for your, from your father. If, you, if you're somebody already like that, like you take some inspiration, you get some teaching, it's easier, right? People always say Napo baby this and that, but it kind of makes sense when you really think about it. Like you just get downloaded directly, right? If your father is something like that, you get downloaded, you, it's easier for you to succeed. So that by bringing him up, there's now going to be a thousand conspiracy theories in the comments down below, and I wanted to read them. So you could probably check those out too. Anyways. Now with Howard Schultz in charge of the company, to everybody's surprise, it starts doing great and he starts opening up more and more Starbucks all over the country. And just to be clear, Starbucks was not the first coffee shop in North America, but it was the first like mainstream chain of coffee shops that was a lot of people's introduction to coffee shops in America. And for that reason- Just like I'm pretty sure McDonald's wasn't the first burger shop, right? I don't know who, was it Burger King before McDonald's? I don't know, but yeah, McDonald's was the first place it just became bigger, right? They kind of got credit for a lot of different things. Pretty much anything new that came out in the coffee industry, Starbucks would adopt it and they would kind of get credit for it. Like they didn't invent the Frappuccino. That was invented by Coffee Connection out of Boston, Massachusetts in 1992. But everybody associates a Frappuccino with Starbucks, which obviously was just the next evolution of coffee in America, right? Because it's a very niche community that enjoys a nice strong cup of coffee or a cappuccino or an Americano or a latte, you know, your traditional coffee drink. Yeah, just like... Apple then invent the concept of smartphones. There were already phones before that kind of similar had that, but the flipping the page element, that was definitely Apple. The, everything you associate with a smartphone today probably come from an iPhone, uh, iPhone, Apple basically. But some version of that already kind of existed before that. Like somebody already kind of did that, but not exact setup that we have today. But yeah, iPhone basically made it seamless, right? It's just like easy and people kind of like cling into that. There you go. But nowadays, everybody like, every, oh, Apple invented this, Apple invented that. Like, no, some Android phone has that like past six, seven years. The hell you want about? People are like in Apple ecosystem. Even I have an iPhone right now, right? I gift it to my mother, but whenever I use it, I'm like, God damn it. So I, you know, I, every time I think about, should I use iPhone instead of Android? Like, no. Right. Even right now, like I had option like, should I buy iPhone Pro or should I buy Samsung Galaxy Ultra? I still went with the Ultra. Like I can't touch iPhone right now. But yeah, every, that iPhone ecosystem. Remember, oh, iPhone invented this. iPhone did that. Like not really drinks. So if they wanted to make more money and expand bigger, they needed to appeal to a wider audience. And how do you appeal to a wider audience, particularly an American one? You add fucking 72 grams of sugar and some whipped topping and drizzle some caramel and hot chocolate on top. Fucking bam. Energy milkshake. Okay. I know that's going to upset a lot of people, but if your drink has over 250 calories and it's got whipped topping, it's not coffee. Okay. That is a milkshake with caffeine in it. Wait, is this just milk and sugar? That's what I said. Do you drink this every day? 
every morning. So now they're no longer just targeting coffee snobs. They're targeting. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, I don't want to pause too much, but yeah, that is kind of, yeah, I, I guess how you see it, right? Like coffee itself isn't like really coffee, right? I mean, sure, if you drink black coffee, that's just coffee, obviously. But most people like drink coffee with milk. That's mostly milk and sugar than coffee. That's how it's always been. But yeah, but nowadays, like I'll see like Starbucks and this like vanilla cream on top of it, some chocolate chips, this and that. Is this even coffee anymore? Like he said, it's literally milkshake with a coffee flavor in it, right? I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll, I'll bought some drinks, coffee flavored drinks, and it had like decent amount, like 60 milligrams of caffeine, which is like close to what a proper coffee cup should have. So isn't that a coffee in itself? But they said coffee flavored. So on this all coffee flavored than actually being coffee. I don't know. That's just insane. Targeting kids, teenagers, and most importantly, middle-aged, middle-class housewives that have enough expendable income to afford $12 energy drink milkshakes every single day. So now they're literally just swimming in money, right? The Frappuccino is like a giant iceberg. Starbucks is a Titanic. As soon as those two things collided, there's just money everywhere. So now that they're making a ton of money, their business model is just rapid expansion, okay? Starbucks, you got to keep this in mind, is not a franchise. All the Starbucks are owned by Starbucks. You can't buy your own Starbucks. Okay, I don't want to post too much but again if you sell stimulant to a human you're gonna have a big business caffeine is a stimulant drugs is a stimulant in a way so people surprised like pharmaceutical companies are doing really well yeah i mean they go one after another all those like opioid drugs and people just go insane right people literally joke about it like oh legalized drugs or whatever like legalized drug dealers or whatever right there's that look at the alcohol shops and things like you know like beer shops and things right bars and shit of course that's like famous right you got to a bar everywhere doesn't matter where you go you're supposed stimulant is one thing only thing we have is stimulant when we do something good our brain gives us stimulant right when we achieve something our brain gives us stimulant what if we like bypass all that and just drink something that gives us that there you go and then you get hooked on that that is the problem with stimulant Caffeine is that. It's legal. Of course, people are going to drink it. Starbucks and be a franchisee, they're all the same company. So these guys are literally just trying to expand everywhere because in the early 1990s, the coffee craze is starting to hit all over the country and they want to be the first coffee place that most people end up trying so they can get those loyal customers and they get all the business. And whether you like Starbucks or not, you got to admit they did a pretty good job at being literally fucking everywhere all the time because pretty Starbucks good. is like the only business I've ever been in where I can be inside of a Starbucks, look out the window and see another Starbucks. Starbucks off in the distance. And this goes on for almost a decade. Starbucks is just raking in the money, opening up new stores all over the place. And by 2000, Howard Schultz decides that he's going to step down as CEO and he's going to focus all of his efforts into expanding the company, having Starbucks everywhere, all over the world. That same year, Howard Schultz takes Starbucks to China, which is, is absolutely... Absolute Imagine that, right? Being a owner of Starbucks, going and meeting, like how many, how many Starbucks should we open in like Manhattan or something? How many people live in one block? Oh, I don't know, a few hundred thousand. Oh, by the way, we need, we're going to need three Starbucks there in just one block. By the way, that's a good shop. Let's just take it there. You can just see it from here. It makes sense. It's coffee. Everybody needs coffee. There you go. Absolutely insane because China drinks tea. They don't drink coffee. Pour the tea. Regardless, Howard Schultz shows up in China, opens up a Starbucks, basically like just, hey, commies, I know you guys like tea, but hear me out. Try some coffee and some blue jeans. It's way cooler. And to everybody's surprise, the Chinese people fucking loved it. And they started opening up Starbucks at a rate. But, okay, hear me out, hear me out. See, coffee tastes like shit. Chai tea tastes good. But do your chai tea have like chocolate beans in it, vanilla cream in it? Does it, is it a frappuccino, right? Or all this like whipped cream, all that shit? No. So this is better. There you go. Kind of makes sense. That Starbucks had never seen. Okay, they were opening up a new Starbucks every 15 hours for 20 years straight in China. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Nothing warms my heart more than when a communist nation falls in love with American fast food. It's just perfect. This was bad ass scene. Fast forward to 2008, Starbucks is now losing money for some reason. Nobody can really- That was a bad ass scene, I still remember that, right? Like, there was some like, testosterone was like, flowing through him around that time. Because most of this show is like, he's like, willy nilly, am I here, am I there, struggling. But there was some moments he's just like, yeah, I'm this, right? Those have become me, right? You're goddamn right and all that shit.
you figure out why. So Howard Schultz comes back, becomes CEO again, and he's trying to figure out what have they done to his company. He's been focusing on growing, opening up new locations. Meanwhile, all the locations that have already been opened aren't making as much money as they should be. What on earth is going on? Schultz discovers for the past eight years in his absence that he's been letting a bunch of business majors run his business and all they care about is how to maximize profits. So they did just that. They streamlined everything. They automated everything. Starbucks no longer grinds coffee in-house at its coffee shops. They do it all in a factory and just ship the ground coffee there. It's quicker, it's more efficient, it probably makes more money, but now Starbucks, a coffee shop, doesn't smell like freshly ground coffee. It smells like a hospital. They replaced all the traditional espresso machines with these automatic machines that would just spit out a completely done drink, which means they basically got rid of baristas and they just had a person behind the counter that would grab the cup from the machine. That is so insane, right? Because like, oh, oh. A lot of things you need to like have it made fresh if you want like the aromas and everything, right? Otherwise, just drink an instant coffee, those Nestle coffees, right? What is it called? Instant Nestle coffees, right? Uh, the Brazil thing, right? So I'm pretty sure like Brazil was the reason when Nestle came up with those coffee and shit, right? I don't know. But yeah, instant coffee shit. Just drink that if you're going to do that. So people are basically like, yeah, why would I drink that? So you took out a soul from that. People sometimes like check graphs and stats. Everything's math, right? Everything is mathematics. Everything's graph. Fuck everything else. No, you need to see like the soul of it. Why would somebody go there? What is the it factor? X factor, whatever you call it. What is about that, right? Uh, many places when you see like successful places, like whether it's car industry or whatever, there's some X factor there that shouldn't be there scientifically, but it's there just to appease people. You need to have that that made it and hand it to the person. Essentially, the business majors had gotten rid of the culture and the experience of going to a coffee shop, which was the entire point and justification of overcharging for coffee in the first place. Remember, it's just like a bar. You wouldn't want to go drink a beer inside of a hospital room. You'd rather go home and do that in your backyard. If you're going to go and overpay for beer, you want to go to a cool bar with your friends. It's the same deal with a coffee shop. People pay for products and people pay for experiences and they got rid of half of that equation and it's making the entire company suffer. I'm surrounded by idiots. Howard Schultz correctly identifies this and pretty much immediately has everybody start grinding the coffee fresh in the individual Starbucks locations to bring back that coffee smell. He gets rid of all the automatic machines, brings back all the traditional coffee shop equipment, and then he shuts down every single Starbucks and retrains all the baristas in how to turn this place into an actual coffee shop again. And with that, the crisis is averted. Everything's back on course. They're making money again like they're supposed to be. Howard Schultz has one eye on the past. It's a surprise. Once a brand becomes like associated with something, how you step away from that i'm guessing they must have done some kind of pr campaign or something like uh, displaying how they did the changes and things because when people associate like a starbucks just sucks it's just machines and things with bad coffee people are not going to forget that you need to do a full pr campaign if you're going to change that he knows how they got here. He knows what he needs to keep doing to be successful. But now he's got to keep that other eye on the future. Okay, got to remember, it's 2008, 2009. Smartphones are becoming a thing. Everybody's getting an app. Starbucks has to get an app, right? Okay, so they build the Starbucks app. Now, the app is super straightforward. You take money, you put it on the app. The money sits there until you spend it at a Starbucks. And then when you do spend money from the app, you're going to get stars, which is basically your rewards. And once you get so many stars... Drink. And then as time progressed, you could do online ordering and you could order from your phone so it was ready when you got to the coffee shop if you were in a hurry or something. But the key function of the Starbucks app is that it's essentially a gift card that's on your phone. You charge it up, you spend it at Starbucks, you get free rewards. And it works out great for a lot of people, right? If you go to Starbucks every day, spending $10 a trip and you're spending $300 a month at Starbucks, you can just take $300 at the beginning of the month, charge up your Starbucks thing and you're good to go and then you get a bunch of free drinks along the way. But here's the catch with that. While it functions like a gift card to the consumer, it functions like a bank to Starbucks, okay? I mean, think about how a bank works. You go to a bank, you open up an account, and then you give them your money, and then they just hang on to it for you. That is nothing to think about. That is how bank work. If you don't know that, then you don't know how bank works, right? When you give banks your money, right, bank, when you give bank your money, right, that bank's going to use your money to do a lot of things to grow that money, right? And assumption is you're probably not going to take out all the money at once, right? There is literally crisis when people, for whatever reason, takes out money at the same time and banks basically panic, like, what the fuck to do now, right? Usually banks have, like, a lot of, like, customer base, right? So even if few takes out of money, it's probably overall it's fine because a lot of that money they basically put somewhere else to, like, you know, like, I don't know, they give, they're going to give out loans to people and just, like, use things, this and that. 
you think like that's a problematic thing because it's like playing share market with your money and what if all that fails but nowadays if a bank is major enough it has a government banking right backing government backing why am i having a problem with words it has government backing so even if they lose money some government will bail them out essentially what happened in 2008 in usa right people like oh government back you know basically to, you know back them the government bailed them out what else are going to do your money would have been fucked when you went to the bank they wouldn't have your money there so they had to do that right the problem was like nobody got in trouble or something or most people didn't got in trouble that was a was a issue people had but yeah so basically people got <laughs> bailed out from their own money taxes that they paid but yeah so that's how bank works so i guess starbucks and i'm pretty sure i can see with the application things uh, mobile application a lot of things are like that uh, with coupons and like shit and like a lot of apps are like that where they basically take your money and act like a bank right i don't know until they need it and in the meantime they go and they invest your money and make money off of your money and then they give you some of that money back and that's how much interest you accrue but what starbucks has done is you now give starbucks money and they sit on that money and then they don't have to give you that money back you can't get your money out of the starbucks app the only thing you can do with that money now is buy coffee at starbucks and they don't have to give you interest for it right if you give starbucks 300 dollars, they get to sit on it and do whatever the fuck they want with it they owe you 300 dollars worth of coffee which to them probably only costs like 80 dollars to make but that's their money now and they get to do whatever they want with it right they can literally put it in much less than 80 dollars right 300 dollars are already overpriced it should be some like let's just say 120 dollars what the 300 dollar thing was and of the 122 120 dollars is a profit and all those things probably much less than that right 50 60 dollars worth of like coffee and like raw materials at the base price not to mention they are the one who like comes up with the raw material in the first place that was the whole thing right in the stock market and make you know seven percent interest off of all your money meanwhile you're making nothing the only problem you're gonna have is that you didn't buy more Sound fair enough? Uh, <laughs> my wife might divorce me, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And here's the thing. It's basically a win-win because you don't care. You have a hundred bucks in there. They would have paid you like seven cents. Who cares? It's no big deal, right? But when Starbucks, who in 2024 has 35,000 locations and millions of customers, has all these people with 5, 10, 15, 20, 100, $300 in their Starbucks account sitting there doing nothing, Starbucks as of 2024 has $1.7 billion sitting inside of their app that hasn't been redeemed yet. Okay, $1.7 billion is more than 90% of all banks in the United States of America have access to. Starbucks is literally one of the biggest banks in the country they don't have to pay interest to any of their clients they're not fdic insured and they don't owe you shit bear in mind even if you do redeem it they're making like a hundred percent profit margin built into their prices already and on top of that they already know that like 10 percent of people are just gift cards that are never actually going to redeem it or that got lost or they changed phones and they lost track of their account so they're just going to start a new one there was 20 bucks there it's not worth the hassle starbucks just gets to keep that money forever but here's the crazy part because Starbucks hasn't actually given the customer their product yet. It's just $1.7 billion that's redeemable by the customer, which means that that $1.7 billion that is sitting inside of a Starbucks bank account controlled 100% by Starbucks isn't income. It's not profit. It's not revenue. It's a liability, meaning it's not taxed at all. So Starbucks essentially has a $1.7 billion 0% interest untaxed loan that they can use to invest on whatever the fuck they want. They can do the most conservative investing on the planet. They could take all $1.7 billion and invest it in US government treasury bonds that pay 5% and still make $85 million a year for doing fucking nothing. The real question is this, was all this legal? absolutely fucking okay if you're not picking up what i'm putting down starbucks has literally done what cryptocurrency has tried to do they created their own currency oh, right when you i mean uh, not really because there's only one way right once you get that thing you can get the money back so it's just like paying a company uh, uh a lot of company basically must have shit like that, right? I can already see certain apps being that like, okay, buy our coupons and this and that, you'll get this profit. Uh, 
there's lots of balance and like wallets and shit but this this is different in that way because you don't get the money back once you give the money that money is gone now you can only buy the raw things like coffees and shit right so that's different in a way but yeah the overall <laughs> starbucks being like this, this is insane uh, they don't get taxed i mean but i see a problem there because if they become big enough right the whole the whole element of like a free market uh, certain commonsensical things get thrown out of the window because le let's say apple right apple is being sued right now by u.s government for monopolizing right are they really monopolizing anything can't you people buy samsung there i'm pretty sure oneplus sells their thing there as well so how is it monopoly if all of you decided to buy 90 percent of you decided to buy apple isn't that your choice since the other choices still exist how is that a monopoly but after some time after becoming too powerful even though you're not technically monopoly people can say like even though you're not a monopoly you're becoming that and that's a problem even though it's not illegal even though it's not your fault but it's just becoming that right we have to have free market element type of way which is weird right in democracy it feels weird when you think about it like what are you communist how does that work you basically question all this shit right so starbucks if become too big and becomes too big of an unregulated bank government might might you know like come after them this way like you're becoming like a bank or shit like that whatever even though technically they check all the boxes doesn't matter if you're big enough that's a problem to our people right our people might face this issue you're becoming like a bank and they could find excuses like that i don't know Look at the US dollar. The US dollar is backed by the US government, which used to be backed by gold, but now it's just backed by the biggest military on the planet. America used to run on the gold yeah, standard, that's true. now we just run on the lead standard. Regardless, that's what you're <laughs> banking on when you put your money in US dollars. You're banking on the US government not failing. Starbucks, when you put money in their app. US dollar is so insane, man. It was gold standard, it's not now. Okay, so it's just US dollar, right? It has become itself a gold standard. By the way, a lot of if not most of the currency on the planet is tied with US dollar. That gives uh, enormous power to US dollars, right? Especially when everything's global economy. Everything's tied to with each other. But those things are tied to the US dollar. So that automatically makes US dollar really powerful. That's why people are like, oh, we have this debt, we have that debt. All right, I guess I'll print more money or some shit like that. Sure, it raises the inflation, but it will inflate everything around it because US dollar is the one that's everything tied to, right? It's in a weird place. Some countries are realizing that and trying to stay, you know, step away from that, like China and things. It's trying to step away from US dollar. I don't know how they're gonna do that. Since global economy itself needs USA in the first place, how are you gonna do that? It's like a weird thing. But yeah, that is insane. You're just banking on the fact that you're going to be able to go pretty much anywhere in the country or most places around the world and be able to redeem that magical internet coupon on your phone for some good coffee. Okay, the name Starbucks is starting to make a lot more sense now, isn't it? Okay, and here's what I want you to think about. Think about a bank. You walk into a bank in the lobby, there's always free coffee, and then you walk in, you give them your money, and they hang on to it until you want it back. Starbucks does the exact same fucking thing, except somehow they get away with charging you money for the coffee, and then they never ever ever have to give you your money back they're only gonna give you coffee this is the craziest business model on the planet okay and the best part is there's no victims nobody's mad okay everybody that gives starbucks their money never expects their money back they just want coffee and that's exactly what they get they're happy yeah, technically so the only if some people will do that and like 300 dollars and shit like that while banks would have thousands of your dollars maybe even more so but yeah, I see the point. Starbucks gets a $1.7 billion untaxed 0% interest loan, makes a ton of money. Everybody gets their coffee. It just, it's, it's the most incredible business model I've ever come across ever. Okay, at this point, I feel like I've said pretty much nothing but Amazon good things about us. Starbucks and I need to talk a little smack now so that things can be balanced. This whole thing should be. I don't even know where to start, so we're just gonna start with- Yeah, Amazon has better model than that. Nothing will ever beat, ever beat Amazon's model, what Jeff Bezos did. He should make a video about that. He should really research it out. I don't care if it's like an hour long video or some shit, right? He, he should put all his chips into that and make an Amazon video because I feel like Fatrison is great at that. And if he can make Starbucks video, why not Amazon? American company still. Because Amazon is insane. Like Americans, you Americans basically, I'm, you know, um, one thing I've noticed when it comes to business, every single 
thing I've seen of the past. Americans always come across some uniquely complicated system that confuses people on top, but somehow is like molded in a tune in a way that will make an insane amount of profit in the future or like just along the way, right? Amazon, when you really analyze things, how the fuck are you making profit? There was a time where he actually, Amazon actually lost money launching a product just, be, just so they can like, uh, there was another company they were trying to put out of business just so Amazon can have that product because Jeff Bezos can't have like, oh, I, I, out of 100 things, I have 99 things. What if I don't have one thing? Somebody else can sell that. No, fuck that. I must have all the things. I don't care if I lose money. Why? Because the long term, Amazon will become like a default thing, like how Google is default browser. People say Google has become like that verb. Type. Let's just Google it. That's, that's the thing now. Amazon wanted to be that. And they did that. Only Americans have seen doing this shit. Right? And people like, who are the richest people? Like, these American businessmen are ridiculously rich. Of course they are. They did all this shit, right? General Motors, right? Chevrolet, I think it's 1899. Chevrolet, the guy who created Chevrolet, created Chevrolet, everything. I think he got kicked out of the board and something. He went out and made another company called General Motors. The people who ran Chevrolet ran it so badly that they had to sell. And I'm pretty sure the guy, I'm pretty sure I know the General Motors guy, bought his own company Chevrolet back. And now we have like Chevrolet under General Motors, even though Chevrolet is the kind of the main company. Every time some insane genius guy comes along, this is the case. Even if he get kicked out, he makes some other company. The, the original company, you just pull in, he buys it again. Same shit happened with the Starbucks here, right? Uh, the genius sometimes just like when it runs well, it, it will, it will do anything, right? Doesn't matter which field you go on. And I've seen that many times. That is insane. People are like, what you need to do to become successful? I don't know. If, you, if you're probably asking this question, you're not going to be successful. Because <laughs> you wouldn't be asking this question if you had that mentality. With the union thing, unions are a very political topic. Democrats typically like them. Republicans typically hate them. I'm not getting into what should or shouldn't happen or who's right or who's wrong. All I'm going to say is the baristas have been trying to have a Starbucks union for like the past 10 years and Starbucks has been fighting tooth and nail to prevent that from happening. And in 2002 like to help Starbucks Lee. accomplish this, they hired a new manager in um, Global Intelligence for Retail Operations, which is probably the most menacing title I could possibly come up like with. CIA. But what's more interesting is this person's background and who they worked for previously. Obviously. Those being the Central Intelligence Agency and the Pinkerton Group. Pinkerton Detective Agency, seconded to the United States government. Nice to finally meet. Okay, just so we're all on the same page. First of all, CIA, right out of the gate, overkill immediately. But then you add the Pinkerton Group on top of it, and this is fucking insane. Okay, because if you don't know, the Pinkertons are literally the fucking bad from guys from Red fools. Dead Redemption 2, okay? They yeah. CIA is so intense, I'm pretty sure people will never realize, even if they're like, the CIA has become so overblown that people are associated with that, like secrecy and like badass, law, like, oh, security and all that. That is an understatement. CIA have done shit like making insurgencies here and there, even something that could be classified as terrorist cell just to destabilize enemy regions and areas. This is not warfare, this is some next level shit. CIA does that, eh, this is what we do. A guy from CIA, already working, God knows what he's going to do there, right? So, yeah, this is, this is a problem. Even Dodo Bleep, for the past 30, 40 years, like people like Jesse Ventura and God knows what, is trying to do union thing, but he never succeeded because, I guess, Vince McMahon. Yeah, you, you can just see him and you realize, like, nothing's going through him, right? So, basically, that never worked. With the UFC now winning Dodo Bleep, I don't know where that's going to go, but yeah. They've been banned from doing federal work for the government since like 1893. Do you know we how never sketchy sleep. you have to be to get banned from working for the United States federal government? And to make it even worse, the reason they got banned, it's literally called the Anti-Pinkerton Anti Act of 1893. Act. The main reason that it went into effect was because the Pinkertons got hired to bust up unions in the 1800s. And they were doing that by joining the unions secretly and breaking them up which led to a shit ton of violence and murders. So the fact that Starbucks hired one to keep the baristas in line is some of the most unhinged shit I've heard in my entire life. That'd be like if you're- <laughs> It's baristas, man, baristas. It's like, what is, I don't even know how to compare this shit. Like finding some badass, like some like, what is it like ex KGB or like ex Mossad or ex CIA, I don't know. Well, basically like, so, assassin spy level shit, ex James Bond, 
just to break up union of like what school teachers like I don't know like PT teachers or something like baristas like are you kidding me like all they like you know, talk to people and brew coffee this is the shit we're dealing with that's insane that's a working as fuck your local school district's administrator hired an ex-Blackwater guy to keep the English department in check, okay? It's complete overkill. Do you know how much money I would pay to be able to be a fly on the wall during the interview for that job and the events leading up to it? Okay, now on to the new CEOs. Howard Schultz retired in 2002 and Starbucks has been struggling ever since because immediately upon entering the job position as CEO, his successor had a brilliant idea. What if we quit focusing on being a coffee shop and we divert all of our efforts and attention to being better at being a drive through coffee service? Which to be fair, if you don't think about it, this is absolutely brilliant, right? Because Starbucks has never made this exact mistake before between 2000 and 2008. And even if they did, who cares? Because the only thing better than making a mistake is making the same exact mistake same twice. twice. You to give them the credit, like, uh, drive through is too big in USA. People just like, people want seamless thing in USA. Just like, take it, fuck off, like, just seamless things. People like that. Drive throughs are really big, so they're like, maybe, I don't know. Really? This stupid. So obviously that CEO didn't last very long. He was employed for a total of 17 months before he was forced to step down by the board and Starbucks just hired their new CEO, the former CEO of Chipotle. And apparently this guy is awesome. I think under his command, Chipotle's stock price rose 700%. So that's great, but here's the problem. This guy lives in California and he didn't want to move all the way. Why did Chipotle let him go though? up to Seattle because he enjoys the sun and the beaches and he didn't want to move where it's gloomy and always raining. But Starbucks really wanted to hire this guy. So what they came up with was he can super commute to Starbucks headquarters three times a week. And when I say super commute, I mean, he's going to get to take the Starbucks private jet from California to Seattle a thousand miles round trip. Imagine if he said, nah, I'm going to take the helicopter, even badass. I'm just going to land on top of the fucking thing. There you go. Three times a week. The man's literally the Taylor Swift of CEOs. Okay. And honestly, good for him. It's kind of fucking gang that he got offered a job for $1.3 million a year with a $10 million sign-on bonus and a bunch of stock options. Dude's making millions and millions of dollars a year and he's still like, nah, I'm not taking the job. I don't want to move. And Starbucks folds and is like, fuck it. You can take the private jet. We'll pay for it to fly you to work three times a week. That's a gangster ass move. I kind of respect it. But on the flip side, we've got the environment. I mean, CEO CEOs are already overpowered of any major company. You are the one who runs the company. Everybody just like board of directors. Okay, board of directors meeting. Like, what we made? Give me the charts. That's it. Everything else is under CEO's power. CEO is it. Usually, that kind of a CEO usually has stake in the company. And board of directors usually prefer that because, like, if you have stake in the company, you're probably going to take care of it better type of way. So, usually, CEOs and like the top guy, basically, which is CEO, nobody's up more opulent CEO people like think chairmen and things but it's like boy they don't run things CEO is the only one who runs things right after that it's just board of directors so usually CEO is kind of part of board of directors he has sta stake in it or something but yeah I mean jet that doesn't feel that far because CEOs makes millions what is a jet ride now in here right yeah private jet makes sense I'm pretty sure there are a lot of CEOs out there of major company takes private jets all the time Environment, you know, climate change, which a lot of people care a whole lot about. And to be completely honest, I'm I'm not really one of them. I mean, look at me. I don't exactly scream climate change activist or or active in general, really. But regardless, as far as I'm concerned, if they're willing to pay to have this guy fly private three times a week, more power to him. Go right ahead. He could drive a fucking M1 Abrams tank to work every day for all I care. Okay, but I don't ever want to hear Starbucks talking about climate change and being green ever again, all right? This is the same company that tried to make the entire planet drink out of reusable cups with mushy ass paper straws, and half their website is dedicated to showing off how much they care about the environment, how many environmental impact studies they've done, and blah, 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 blah. What are the environmental impacts? impact studies say only poor people can put carbon into the atmosphere get the fuck out of here why don't you guys just tell the truth throw it up on the website have a press that is so fucking true a lot of freight trip right cargo ships when they run they pollute more than a lot of cars in the city same thing warships right army navy ships aircraft carriers and like big ass ships they have to be run constantly. You can't shut it off for whatever reason, right? For a long time. They pollute same as uh, basically almost all cars in that particular city. All this like freight ship, this ship, like what? You can't figure out a way to shut them off and shut them on again if you're going to be at the dock for a week or something. 
and you expect everyone to buy electric car are you fucking kidding me rich people can take their yacht which pollute more than 100 even like 500 cars depending on the size of their yacht right can just take out there on the scene doing whatever the fuck they want and i have to worry about electric car really what about jets private jets one guy take private jet to one place to another pollute the shit out of him more pollution than i'll ever do in an entire fucking year just he'll do that in one one flight one guy in one private jet i'm supposed to buy electric car so all this like you know by the way by apple apple are you fucking kidding me apple oh we're going to remove the charger we're going to do this we do this reusable they always like bitch about all this thing like how how much we are saving the planet why am i talking about apple because they're the biggest company why is i'm saving the planet by the same time you you can't open your phone and change the battery so if your battery dies you have to throw that fucking phone away and buy a new one that is not polluting that is not polluting more than whatever the small shit you're doing here and there like saving the charger and whatever right this is insane shit right okay usb c new iphones have usb c still doesn't come with charger your argument was you already have a charger so we're not going to give you new one to stop pollution people are lightning cable they don't have usb c why not giving usb c in your new usb c phone so that's all bullshit release it just straight up says hey we've hired the scientists the mathematicians we've done the research we've done the calculations and we've come to the conclusion that if we can inconvenience enough poor people it's going to offset all the rich people behaving like giant assholes all the time i'm dead serious you should actually do it because you want to know what's going to happen basically nothing i guarantee you there will be a climate change protest outside of seattle headquarters for like 45 minutes literally just long enough for all the college students that showed up to get a quick picture for Instagram to show how much they care and then they're all going to disappear and go back to what they were doing and you want to know what they're going to leave behind a mountain of garbage and half of that garbage is going to be empty Starbucks cups anyways okay nobody actually cares everybody's virtue signaling Starbucks isn't a coffee shop it's an unregulated bank thank you for watching best way to support the channel is to go buy some merch over the fatelectrician.com quack bang out You know, if Starbucks was actually smart, they would just hire the CIA and the Pinkertons to assassinate climate change, and then we wouldn't have this problem in the first place. Yeah, but they'll pop up like nothing. You remove one, another will, another one will pop up. Look, climate change cannot happen happen locally. It will never happen. All these activists will not do shit. Only will happen at a global scale if it becomes an issue that people actually want to care, which they don't. Nothing's gonna happen. That's the reality of it. nothing's gonna happen. People like actively have to like fuck this. We have to do something about it. Out of eight billion, at least five to six billion have to care about it. They won't. I don't know. Not five to six billion. Like a lot of them are children. You know what I mean. At least seventy to eighty percent has to be there. Like I have to do something. That is the only time something will happen. Otherwise, it won't. Right now, I highly doubt even ten percent cares. Right. So yeah, climate. And other thing. In order to achieve climate change, you have to like. sacrifice freedom a lot of people so that democracy goes out of the window which is like fucked up right and basically you have to become like communist socialist slash the you can put slashes in front of it because only way to do that is remove uh, you know like uh, you know democratic side of a lot of things right take shit away from the rich people even though they are not doing anything wrong you can have jet planes right uh, you can do this you can do this by the way apple you can't be a company anymore None of these things happen in democracy in free world at all. So climate change is such a weird thing that in order to achieve that one has to be authoritarian. But if you like save the world while being authoritarian, did you really save the world? So it's like a weird dilemma. I don't know how shit's going to happen in the end of the day like I said. If 70 80% people care and actually have knowledge and like big corporations doesn't cook up some plan to distract them, that is the only time I see something happening. or actually people's ass is being fired at that time government scientists are really just like basically ramp up their uh, you know like whatever thing they're doing but I, i don't see it happening otherwise right well that was what's biggest unregulated bank starbucks by channel fat files if you like more like so don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time